All right, so my mom is Jewish. In fact, she's three generations back Jewish. And my father is Orthodox Christian. But most of the people I meet think I'm either from Germany or the Netherlands. So what genes make me, me? Well, I decided to do a DNA test with 23andMe to find out. So let's talk about this. You know, it's fascinating how our DNA defines so much about us. From our heritage to our unique traits, I ordered the 23andMe kit and the process couldn't be easier. 23andMe is a Bay Area consumer genetic company founded by Linda Averi, a biologist, Paul Susenza, and Anne Wojcicki. Well, yes, that Anne Wojcicki, who is the ex-wife of Google's Sergey Brin and the sister of uh, Susan Wojcicki, the legendary CEO of YouTube up until February this year. And while it is scary to give my DNA to a private company, well, that company seemed to have the best pedigree, pun intended. So how does it work? Well, you order the kit, you get a small carton box with a plastic tube and a return mailing sticker. You spin into the tube, seal it and mail it back to 23andMe with the provided sticker. You can choose one out of a few tests. One is like 119 for the ancestry service. If you add $20 more, you get the health report. And if you pay 298, you get the premium service that includes one year of subscription. Wait, subscription for a one-time DNA test? I thought this is like a one-time thing. Well, I'll get to it in a second. After you send it, the result take three to four weeks to arrive. And while we wait for the results, I'd love to share a few DNA facts with you because I was surprised to learn some of those myself. Well, first, genetic similarity. We all have the same genes. Each person has the same set of genes, about 20,000 of them in total. The difference between people comes from slight variations in these genes. 99.9% .9 of the DNA is the same for all humans, with small variations that are called SNPs. For instance, the genes for hair color exist in all of us. The different versions dictate whether someone is a redhead or a brunette. Your body contains 50 trillion tiny cells, and almost every one of them contains the complete set of instructions, the complete set of instructions for making you encoded in your DNA. DNA is like a long leather-shaped molecule with pairs of interlocking units known as bases. Those are nucleid acids, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. A always pairs with T, G always pairs with C. And those four acids is basically the blueprint for life. While 99.9% .9 of the DNA is similar between all humans, we share 98.7% of our genetic code with other primates. For example, gorillas, orangutans, and chimpanzees. Furthermore, we share 77% with the star Ascidian. It's a flat gelatinous creature that lives among rocks and seaweed. Like, nothing to do with humans, and yet, 77% of the DNA is the same. Humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Yes, that's why it's called 23andMe. But those aren't uh, the sole determinants of an organism complexity. For example, bananas have 11 pairs, while fruit flies have only four. Chromosomes are further organized into short segments of DNA called genes, which are like recipes in a cookbook written in the DNA alphabet. These genes tell your cells how to function and express traits. So, if you have curly hair, it's because your genes instruct your hair follicle to make curly strands. Essentially, the cells generate curly follicles. The X and Y chromosomes determine your biological sex, with females having two X chromosomes and males having an X and a Y chromosome. Cells use those recipes written in your genes to make proteins, which are essential for various biological processes in the body. Those are basically the building blocks of uh, life. Different combinations of the DNA alphabet letters create different proteins, just like different ingredients create different meals. All the cells in your body contain the same DNA instructions. It's the same source code. But the same genetic code creates different types of cells due to genetic switches. You essentially have little if switches inside your gene that define which parts of the genetic code is actually uh, being used in that gene or in the creation of that gene. These switches 
I like master genes that turn other genes on and off, ensuring the right proteins are produced at the right time in the right cell. When cells divide and copy their DNA, mistakes can occur, leading to variations in the DNA sequence at particular locations known as SNPs. Those are single nucleotide polymorphisms. These SNPs can result in differences in appearance, disease susceptibility, or drug response. Your sperm and egg cells have only one chromosome from each pair, and those chromosomes are randomly selected, creating unique combinations in each sperm and egg. When they combine during fertilization, they form a single cell with two complete cells of chromosomes, which eventually develop into you. Your observable traits or phenotypes result from interactions between your genes and the environment. While some traits are de mostly determined by genes, others, like for example personality, have a more complex relationship with genetics. For example, genes do not dictate your personality, but they do dictate your response to your environment and various situations that you might be in and does impact how your personality is formed throughout your life. It could be that other people with uh, different genetics would react differently to the same situation you would be in, and so the personality would form differently. The thing is that certain types of DNA, like for example the Y chromosome and mitochondrial DNA, can be used to trace ancestry because they are passed relatively unchanged throughout generations. So basically the changes are very minimal and very rare. Through advancements in technology, scientists can now analyze hundreds of thousands of SNPs in your genome. And since they hardly change from one generation to another, you can trace back to which region or ethnicity do these tiny changes come from or where they are common. 23andMe slowly analyzes those common changes from people from different regions or different ethnicity to all kinds of surveys and field analysis. And by collecting a lot of data, they find out where do you and your family come from, as well as which disease uh, or other traits you are susceptible to. Okay, I mentioned before that there's a subscription, and why do I need a subscription for one-time genetic tests? Well, I found out that a large part of what 23andMe offer is they match you with your relatives and with other people kind of in your uh, ancestry tree and connect between you. So basically you can find distant relatives that live far away that also took the 23andMe test. And in order to um, share with you those family members and new research that happens on that same uh, DNA that was sequenced from your speed, they charge you a subscription, which is $69 a year and is included for one year in uh, the premium package. Is it worth it? Well, I gave it a try for a year, we'll see. Okay, I think my results are ready. Let's go open them. Let's see if I identify as cat. I am, surprise, surprise, 51% Ashkenazi Jew, 48% Eastern European from Prague, Minsk, Czech Republic, and 0.4% Finnish. That kind of makes sense. Considering uh, my mom is Ashkenazi Jew and my father is Russian, 51%, 48% actually makes a lot of sense. Pretty precise. On top of the ancestral report, I also have health reports and um, research information. This uh, journey into my genetic heritage has been truly eye-opening. It's incredible how our DNA holds the keys to our past, present, and future in so many ways. I'd love to hear your uh, thoughts on and if you've ever explored your own DNA to test like this. Please share the comments below and remember, let's keep it civil. Don't forget to like the video or just leave your favorite smiley in the comment to feed the algorithm. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.